For those of you who know your history, you know that these two men wrote a bill that created the entire Platte Purchase, the whole northwest part of Missouri. They were law partners, they were friends some time ago. Today, their political views are so different that they're almost willing to hurt each other, but they're not going to. One is armed and dangerous, obviously. David Rice Atchison, Alexander Donovan, not at all. A man of peace. And here they come, two lawyers that were former law partners right here in Liberty, Missouri. I'm looking out today and my heart is sad. You good people of Liberty elected me back in February to go to the state convention in Jefferson City at the call of Governor Jackson and the Missouri General Assembly. We assembled initially in Jefferson City and we retired to complete our work in St. Louis, Missouri. You, the people of Missouri, overwhelmingly elected union men to serve at that convention. Even Pat Price, who I hear today is garrisoned with his troops, having fallen back from Wilson's Creek or at Lexington. Now they're Missourians. But unfortunately for me, I believe that they have been deceived. They have been deceived away from what I would call the true cause. The true cause is what I was elected to serve under, that I fought under while I was in Mexico. I led many of these boys down into Mexico back in the 40s. We fought for peace. Today, our union is at risk. I am a union man. I stand for the union. Boy! I did not raise a gun. You see, my dear friend David Rice Atchison appears assembled in front of you, loaded to the hilt. I come in peace. St. I have Louis fought. Massacre. St. Louis Massacre. Yes, I'm aware of that unfortunate circumstance. And I agree with you that it was a horrific event. It's an exemplification of where unpeaceful people assemble for the purpose of unpeaceful means. And there, we see bloodshed. They kill us, they say, be peaceful. I am encouraging peace. I have seen war, and I don't like war. Now let me talk to you, sir. What are you fighting for? For my home. And I am too. And I believe every one of us here in the state of Missouri, despite the tragedy of Fort Jackson, Despite the tragedy of the deaths on the streets of St. Louis back in May of this year, I stand committed to this union. Let me explain. Secessionism is not a new event in American history. General Washington himself, as president of the U States of America, stood firm against the Whiskey Rebellion in 1794. He put down that rebellion. And what was his farewell remarks to this great nation? When he left the office of the presidency, that great magistrate wrote, this nation is indissoluble. It is a union that cannot be divided. He stood his ground in his farewell address. He put down the Whiskey Rebellion. No blood was shed. You, sir, are a Calamite, and a Calatine, and a Burrite, and you know what I mean. What did Aaron Burr do? Aaron Burr tried to secede the western states of Kentucky and Tennessee to join up with Mexico. Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, the author of the Declaration himself, quelched and squashed and quashed that rebellion of Burrite. And you all know today, Cicero stood on the steps of the Roman Republic 
and decreed that Kathleen was wrong in his attempt to destroy the Republic. Aaron Burr was wrong in his attempt to destroy the Union. No different than Catiline was wrong in the Roman Republic. But then, we see the Hartford Convention in 1814. Yes, the people of New England wanted to secede from the Union. And what did Madison say? No, there is no right to secede from the Union. And if you forget your own former president for those boys in Jackson County, you will know that Andy Jackson himself addressed Calhoun down, his own vice president. And what did he say about the Nullification Act of South Carolina? The nullifiers were wrong, he proclaimed. Even Tyler had to deal with a rebellion, the Doors Rebellion, when Rhode Island attempted to secede in 1843. Again, that rebellion was put down by peaceful negotiations for the Union. That is the history of secessionism. There is no right to secede, but I do respect that our sister states, misguided as they are, must be gently brought back into the fold. They remind me somewhat of the child that I took to the woodshed, but instead of understanding and learning their lessons of the history of that whooping, ran away. We will not run. We did not run in Mexico. We did not run during the War of 1812. We did not run from the Brits. <laughs> How long will I stand for Missouri? Seven years it took for that Constitution to be written. Seven years it took for the Declaration of Independence to be declared victorious. Those 14 years, I will tell you, is what I'm willing to serve to defend this union. Not only, will I, not only will I fight seven years and seven years more, I will fight into the next millennium for this union. What words could best be spoken than what Andrew Jackson once said, and I will tell you all that know my politics, I was a Whig. I served three terms in this Missouri General Assembly, but I respect the words that Jackson said to Calhoun during that great nullification act. My friends, I raise my hat and my arms with bent knee. This union shall be preserved. God save the union. Preserve!